Okay, party people, we are testing out the brand new Live Air 4 Smart from PD Movie. Now it's a LiDAR autofocusing system, and this is not gonna be some technical deep dive. I've only had this for like two days, so it's gonna be more of a first impressions. We're gonna do a couple of tests, see how well it works. And I'm gonna share some frustrating uh, tiny little bits that I've encountered so far when setting things up and dealing with the whole system. Right now we're shooting on the Blazor Remus 100 millimeter anamorphic. And I just wanted to get a couple of frames on this lens since I rarely get to use it, especially for filming myself. Now, just a heads up, I'm gonna stop down. It is a tiny bit soft, wide open. <laughs> so I've stopped it down. Now I might be a tiny bit underexposed, but it shouldn't matter too much for the lighter itself. So before we switch over to the 65 mil to get a bit more room to play around with, I just wanted to make a couple of these tests step to the side of the frame to see how well the uh, the lidar oh dropped me <laughs> so i'm gonna step back into frame so there's supposed to be some sort of ai tracking aid so it should be keeping up with you if you're stepping out you know a bit to the sides now remember we're shooting anamorphic so i'm not sure how that converts over to anamorphic since we're a bit wider and all that fun stuff but let's switch over to the 65 mil and I will tell you about some frustrating parts that I've come across so far. Okay, so now we're on the 65 millimeter anamorphic and hopefully there's gonna be a bit more <laughs> room to play around with. Now, like I said, I don't have any script uh, or anything. I just have a couple of notes here. So excuse me if I <laughs> look on my phone, I'm not updating my Instagram or anything. I'm just, you know, making sure that I get everything in here. I think the PD Movie Live for Smart <laughs> is probably the most affordable LiDAR autofocus system you can get now this kit alone now during pre-sales and this is not a sponsored video or anything by the way uh, i paid about 285 during pre-sale i think it's going to be closer to 399 after pre-sale is over and everything there's a couple of different kits and i will put them up here on the screen they come with different accessories and different amount of extra gadgets that sort of stuff but this one is kind of ready to go straight out of the box it's the mid kit with a motor and a little control unit there's also some rod clamps rods that sort of stuff if we're to put together a similar system from the only other company i know that offers lidar autofocus system dji a standalone system like this that's not depending on any gimbal or any other dji ecosystem product as kind of the brain for the entire autofocus system is going to run you about 17 to 1800 bucks if you pick those parts together yourself put them in a the basket check out and swipe your visa card so if we compare 17 to 1800 bucks to like 399 which is basically giving you the exact same features the pd movie is a very very tempting and interesting option now let's move to some of those annoyances so i've never used pd movie systems before if you have then you're probably familiar with the fact that there's i mean they've done a great job at putting things together but there's a lot of weird little specialty batteries calibration as a bare bones setup like this is kind of tedious there's one little button on the motor itself and there's another button on the little control unit and you're basically operating everything with these kind of morse code signals so three short presses one long press different combos like that which kind of tends to be a bit tedious so if you're bringing this out on set especially in the beginning make sure to bring the little manual with you and there's actually a little sheet sheet at the back of the motor itself that tells you the most fundamental or basic of these morse codes here for uh, setting things up and making changes but yeah it's a bit tedious <laughs> and it took me a while to kind of figure out that there's an actual connection between the motor and the control unit uh, that you have to use when you're doing manual calibration of lenses uh, so in order for you to calibrate your own lenses you put up a little chart 
you calibrate the focus at three different distances, make a little press to confirm at each distance, and that's supposed to be done three times for each lens. Now, after the third time, I was under the impression that the motor was kind of automatically gonna store that calibration information, but turns out it didn't, and I redid the calibration process like three or four times, but nothing got saved. So then I figured out that in order to save <laughs> that calibration information, you then have to power on the little control unit and that will tell the motor to store the current calibration setting. So it, it can be a bit finicky. Now I'm actually gonna move around here a bit just to show you a bit more of the actual performance and, uh, and that sort of stuff. Now, there is an app and the app will make everything much, much easier. There's also a ton of stuff you could do from the app. You can set in and out points much easier. You can do that on the motor itself, but using the app for setting focus in and out points is gonna be much, much easier. You can pull focus on the app. And there's also a huge lens database with pre-stored lens calibration data on there. So if you're using a pretty common lens, chances are there's all already calibration data for that lens in the database. So you can just slap that onto the motor and uh, only do one of those first little initial travel calibrations for the focus wheel. Okay, so now we're doing a little travel calibration. So basically just figuring out how much it can turn the focus wheel from endpoint to endpoint basically. And now we should be ready to go. Unfortunately for us Android users, it's only available for iOS at the moment. I've heard rumors about an Android version coming out sometime. I, I don't know when, but until then, just know that if you're an Android user, it's gonna feel a bit clunky. It's gonna be a bit more crippled compared to if you're an iOS user. So PD Movie, if you're watching this, please hurry up with that Android app. Now, I'm gonna take a quick break here and there's gonna be a weird cut and here's the weird clip and I'm back to talk about torque and the autofocus speed. So right now I have the sensitivity or the, uh, the speed set to the lowest setting, but it comes <laughs> default set to pretty much max, dial up to 10 on everything, which actually scared me the other day when I was doing one of those uh, manual calibrations, as one time during the calibration process, the, the focus motor just went haywire and started throwing the focus wheel back and forth. And for a moment there, I was actually afraid that the motor, the torque of the motor would break the helicoid inside the lens or maybe strip some of the gears off or something. Uh, before I managed to disengage the motor. Haven't happened since, but it just goes to show that sending these units out with everything set to max torque and max speed. I know PD Movie, you probably wanna give people, you know, a good show off of what the thing can do, but if you're slapping on a more delicate vintage lens or something, maybe the helicoid inside the lens will break and then you've ruined your lens. So please, PD Movie, don't send these out with max speed or max torque as a default setting. But when it comes to torque, these Remus lenses, I wouldn't call them super duper heavy, but there's definitely a fair amount of resistance and there's no issues or anything. I feel like the overall amount of torque you get on this motor should be sufficient to, to turn around even some old prehistoric Russian <laughs> cast iron cine glass or something. It feels kind of strong. Yep, this is the, <laughs> the other weird cut and I'm currently just unscrewing. This is gonna be an interesting test and we're really pushing the minimum focus distance here. So this here is the manual control, the, the hand wheel for manual focus if you want to go ahead and use this as a regular wireless follow focus so look at the size of this thing if you can <laughs> uh, it's it's so tiny there's a little button here 
at the middle that you can long press, short press, and there's a little built-in uh, quarter-inch thread sticking out here. What I like about this specific hand unit is that it's so tiny, so I can thread this on directly to my cage or a top handle, side handle, that sort of stuff. Or if I'm using something like a monitor with mounting threads on the side, I can just attach it directly to the monitor itself if I want to have like a wireless follow focus unit with a monitor and everything. So super duper handy. I really, really like the size of this. Now you can buy an extender or a little cone that you put on here to make it like a regular sized follow focus wheel size kind of a bub. But for now, I actually like this teeny tiny one here. I think it's perfect. So, uh, so that's another thing that I really, really like about these uh, PD Move systems. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before we get into my kind of first impression, final thoughts, or whatever we want to call it, I do want to talk a bit more about precision. So, there's a couple of things going on here, like I mentioned earlier. I think I mentioned that earlier. Brain is kind of scattered here, but there's a little switch here on the motor, which you can't see, so I'm not sure why I'm pointing, but you can alternate or turn the little LiDAR sensor, depending on if you're shooting at close range with a wide lens or at a greater distance, the LiDAR will be more accurate depending on which little mode you're selecting. But so far it has been working great. Like I said, I'm planning on doing a more in-depth video once I've gotten a few more hours on my belt. So let me know if there's any specific things you'd want me to bring up in that more in-depth video but for now i'm gonna say goodbyes and just let you know that in the description of this video right now there's going to be a link where you can pre-order the lidar autofocus system and it's going to take you to a place where you can compare the pricing of those three different kits and as time moves on i'm going to update the description with more links to amazon maybe to b h if they bring these systems in so you can support the channel if you decide to pick one of these up for yourself but that's going to be it let me know about your questions and all that fun stuff and i'll see you in the next video. Okay, goodbyes. Goodbyes with two hands. <laughs>